want you to think about your dreams, because I'm in a room full of dreamers. I want you to think about it and envision it. You see, I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I don't know what that dream is that you have, and I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be, or if someone told you that it's not possible. I'm telling you right now that your dream is possible. Let's, let's say that together. It's possible. It's possible. One more time. Three, two, one, go. It's possible. There you go. Good job. Thank you. But you see, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say is that it's possible that I can have my dream, that I can live my dream. But in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur a lot of disappointment a lot of failures, a lot of setbacks, and a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will also discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is, is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is, is that you have some greatness within you. You may not see it right now, but you will very soon. As I was saying before, I don't know what that dream is that you have, but my mom, she had a dream of having children and raising children, and she was told that that was not going to be possible. She had already had my older brother, David, and this was eight years later, and the doctors told her that she wouldn't be able to have another child, but she knew that this was her reality, this was her destiny, and she refused to accept that, that response from the doctor. And so she began praying with my dad and, and my brother about this. And later on, uh, there was a teacher that my brother had, and her name was Miss Elisa Spratlin. And she would always walk, she was a teacher, and she would always walk my brother out to the car after school. And she would invite my mom to different events at her church. And my mom, like, she would, something would come up every time. Not that we're blowing her off, but something would just come up. We were busy. And so this one day, Miss Elisa had brought David to the car and said, listen, there's, there's an event going on at my church, and I want you to come to it. This, this thing's been going on for about three weeks now. And my mom's like, wow, three weeks. I've got to be there. So she went, and over the course of about six weeks, the pastor, the evangelist that was there, he was performing miracles. And I don't know what you guys believe, but we believe that this was due to a divine power that I was brought into this world. Because the pastor said to my mom, or to, said to the audience, that there's a woman here tonight who's been trying to have a child, but hasn't been able to. And I'm declaring healing over you right now. And you don't have to stand up. And my mom was looking around the room, looking for who it was. And she just felt all of a sudden that that was her, that he was speaking to. And she felt butterflies in her stomach. And a few weeks later, she found out that she was pregnant. And nine months later, I was born. On her birthday, December 21st, we share a birthday. And I'm named after this pastor that was at this event. His name was Jerry B. Walker. My middle name is Walker. So, I'm telling you the story because your dream, whatever it is, I don't know what you guys have in your mind, what you want to achieve. Maybe it's to sing, maybe it's to dance. I don't know what it is. Mine is to speak. Maybe it's to play sports. I don't know, but someone may have told you that it's not possible, like the doctor told my mom. But she refused to accept that, and you guys have to refuse to accept the opinions of others telling you that your dream is not possible. There's a quote from another motivational speaker, his name is Tony Robbins, and he says, you're in the midst of a war, a battle between the limits of a crowd seeking the surrender of your dreams and the power of your true vision to create and to contribute. It is a fight between those who will tell you what you cannot do and that part of you that knows and has always known that you are more than what people tell you and that a dream backed by an unrelenting will to attain it is truly a reality of an imminent arrival. But you see, my mom could have easily given up on her dream. She could have accepted what the doctor had told her, but she didn't. 
I could easily not be standing here before you today if my mom had to listen to that doctor. But you see, many of us don't work on our dreams because we don't believe in ourselves. Sometimes we have fear, the fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? And there's other people too that don't feel worthy. They get comfortable. They stop growing. They stop pushing themselves. They stop learning. They stop growing and looking for ways to become successful. And they end up becoming very cynical about life. And they throw in the towel on themselves and on their families and on their dreams. What I'm doing now, I could have been doing years ago, back when I was your age, back when I was in middle school. But I didn't think that I could do it. I didn't know what my dream and purpose was in life. I didn't act on my ideas. But you see, growing up, I had a great childhood. And I had gone to Bullock Academy from the time from pre-K until sixth grade. And my brother, he was a great football player. He's the star football player in the high school at Bullock Academy. So in my mind, I want to be just like him. I thought I was going to be better than him. And so I played football in fifth and sixth grade. But in sixth grade, I had a coach and I had other friends telling me that I would never be as good as David. I would never be as strong. I would never be as fast. I would never be as athletic as he was. And so my dreams were crushed. However, I kept running toward this dream. I was going to practice day in and day out, staying afterward, practicing some more. And I was this chunky little kid, so I wasn't the fastest or the strongest, but I believed that in the future I would become an amazing football player. But in seventh grade, at the beginning of seventh grade, I was told that I would have to leave Bullock Academy due to financial issues, and I was crushed. And during this time, in sixth grade and seventh grade, I became very down and depressed on myself because of what my coach had told me, what my friends and, and teammates had told me, that I would never be as good as David. I became very depressed and sick. I felt very sick in my stomach all the time, very anxious feeling, like knots in my stomach. And the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They told me I might have a wheat intolerance, but I knew I didn't have a wheat intolerance. And I just felt sick all the time, so I have to leave school for a couple weeks. And then when seventh grade came along, it was about halfway through seventh grade, that was when I was told that I had to leave Bulk Academy. And I was crushed. I had to leave my friends that I only knew at Bulk Academy. I didn't have any friends outside of that school. And I was depressed. And that was when I had to come here. And I thought this was the worst thing that could have happened to me, that I'd have to come here. But it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. When I came here at the, beginning, at the halfway point between 7th grade, I met a lot of people, met a lot of, a lot of my friends. However, I still didn't know what my dream was. I still didn't know what my purpose was in life. So every spring from 7th grade until 10th grade, I would become very sick. I would miss a few weeks of school, like what happened in 6th and 7th grade. And it was very weird coming back into this school, this middle school where I went, and seeing you guys, because I wasn't there. I was there not too long ago. This is one of the hardest times of my life. And it may be the hardest time for your life right now, but I'm telling you today that it does get better. When I was your age, I didn't know, I didn't think that life would get better than it was at that time. But now, I'm the happiest I have, ever, I have ever been in my entire life because I stuck with it and I found what my purpose and passion was in life. And so as I was saying before, I would get sick every spring until 10th grade. And it was around Thanksgiving time when I was in 10th grade, we had gone up to visit my brother. He lived in Atlanta. And I was sitting there talking to him. And we were just talking about deep stuff. And I said... So what's, what's the purpose of life? And my brother was kind of shocked. He said, well, I, I'm still figuring that out myself. He said, I don't know the exact purpose of life. He said, but I can tell you this. 
the true sole purpose of everyone's life is to add value. And at the time, I didn't know exactly what that meant. Add value, what the heck does that mean? And so I knew that that advice would help me later on in life, so I stuck that in the back of my mind. And as I left there and went back to school, it was now Christmas time in 10th grade. And I was becoming very down and depressed about going back to school in the spring. You know, I was looking into homeschooling because I didn't want to go back to school. That's how much I hated it at the time. However, you can call this coincidence. However, I call it God showing me what my purpose was in life. And I was so down and impressed on this that I was looking for resources, materials that I could read, just to get inspired about going back to school. Trying, reading books, trying to figure out what my purpose was in life. And eventually I came across this motivational speaker by the name of Les Brown. And this guy was so powerful, such a dynamic speaker that he changed my life forever. And I found this tape that my parents had had from back in the 1990s, and it was called, It's Not Over Until I Win. Still have it today. And I listened to this day in and day out. I was listening to this, this guy, Les Brown, every single day, multiple other speakers, just trying to figure out my purpose, feel inspired. Because I know you guys, you're probably going throughout your daily lives feeling like you have no purpose, you have no drive. Maybe you don't know why you need to make those grades that you have in school. You don't feel like doing the work. It's because you don't know what your why is, or you don't know your purpose. <coughs> But this speaker, Les Brown, he was telling his audiences that you have something special. You have greatness within you. You can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. So I took this to heart. I was inspired. And I was thinking in my head while listening to this, you know, why don't more people know about this? Why don't more people my age know about this? And this was when I was in 10th grade. Guys, I'm telling you this today. You're in 8th grade. You had the chance to do more than I have ever done in my entire life. If you would just take to heart what I'm telling you today and implement it into your lives, you can do so much more than what I've done. But one day, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I found an ad for a speaker training down in Orlando, Florida. And prior to this, as I was asking myself the question, why don't more people know about this, I started speaking more. I, I joined a club called Toastmasters that allowed me to speak and improve my communication skills. And so I was, I was basically just saying what Les was saying to my audiences, just to get the word out. And so as I found the speaker training in Orlando, it was, it was quite a bit of money, so I saved up over the course of a couple of months, and I was able to make it to this event, hosted by Les Brown himself. And I had had the dream of meeting Les Brown one day because he had changed my life forever. <coughs> so I went to this event, and as he spoke to his audiences, it was, it was the most surreal thing in my entire life because the man that had been speaking inspirational words, positive words into my life for about six months, I now had the chance to meet him in person. And when I first met him, I had brought the tape with me to get him to sign it. And he said, to Brandon, you have the gift, Les Brown. By that gift, he was talking about the gift of speaking. And I basically found that this talent of mine, I found it by accident. And you guys might know what your talent is. You might know what your your gift is. I didn't know it when I was your age. So one day at this event, I was sitting there at this table talking to other people, and Les was staying behind me, and I didn't know it. And he had come up behind me, put his hands on my shoulders, and said, you are the one. And chills ran down my body because in his speeches, he tells a story about how when he was in fifth grade, he was labeled educably mentally retarded. And he was put back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade. And he failed again when he was in the eighth grade. 
But you see, when he was in fifth grade, he had walked into a classroom to, uh, to meet a friend. And the teacher there was sitting behind his desk. And he asked Les Brown, he said, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And he said, I can't do that, sir. And Mr. Washington, the teacher, asked him, he said, well, why not? And he said, well, I'm, I'm not one of your students. And Mr. Washington said, it doesn't matter. Go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And he said, I can't do that, sir. Mr. Washington said, why not? And all the students in the classroom were laughing at Les. And Les said, I'm, I'm educably mentally retarded. And all the kids in the classroom were saying, he's, he's DT. And Mr. Washington asked Les, what does that mean? What does DT mean? He says, I'm the dumb twin, sir. Les had a twin brother named Wesley. And he was the smart twin. And so since these kids were calling him DT and, and they had labeled him educable and mentally retarded, Mr. Washington came from behind his desk and pointed at Les and he said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And that was a changing moment in Les's life. He was liberated from that point. He still struggled in school, through middle school, and through high school. And when Les was in his junior year, he had just received his report card, and it had indicated that he had failed history and that he had failed English. And he was feeling very down and depressed on himself, just like some of you might feel, just how I felt through 7th and 10th grade. And Mr. Washington, however, he was giving a speech to the graduating seniors that year. And even though Les, being a junior, was not supposed to be in there, he went in there because he felt that the speech that Mr. Washington was giving, that speech was for him. And so he went to the auditorium and just stood in the back. And as Mr. Washington spoke, tears began to roll down Les's eyes because this is what Mr. Washington said. He said, as graduating seniors of Booker T. Washington High School, I want you to know that you're blessed and highly favored. And that as you go towards the future, begin to know that you have greatness within you and responsibility to manifest that greatness. And that you can make your parents proud. You can make your school proud. You can touch millions of people's lives. And the world will never be the same again because you came this way. And the students gave him an arousing standing ovation. And as Mr. Washington left the auditorium and, and ran down steps into the parking lot, Les chased after him. And he said, Mr. Washington. Mr. Washington turned and said, yes. And he said, do, do you remember me, sir? And Mr. Washington said, no. And Les said, I'm, I, I'm Les Brown. He said, I, I'm one of the twins, Leslie and Wesley. And my, my mother, she works in the cafeteria here. And, but you know, I've got these big dreams, sir. I, I love people. I love working with people. I want to talk to people. And I've also got this dream of buying my mother a home. Could I do that, Mr. Washington? Mr. Washington said, it's possible, Mr. Brown. And Mr. Washington turned towards his car once more. And Les called out to him. He said, Mr. Washington. And he turned towards Les and said, what do you want now? And Les, getting all choked up, he said, I'm the one, sir. You remember me, sir. I'm Miss Mamie Brown's boy. I'm the one. And years later down the road, when Les had become a multimillionaire, Mr. Washington gave him a call. And he said, may I speak to Les Brown, please? And Les said, who's calling? Mr. Washington said, you know who this is. And Les said, oh, Mr. Washington, it's you. And he, Mr. Washington responded, he says, you were the one, weren't you? And he said, yes, sir. That is why it was so special for me when Les Brown came up behind me, put his hands on my shoulders and says, you are the one. But I'm telling you today that Les Brown, a multimillionaire, doesn't have to tell you that you are the one. Because I'm here today telling that you are the one. You are the one to achieve your dream. You are the one to become an all-star athlete. You are the one to become an amazing singer, songwriter, dancer. Whatever your dream is, you are the one. And so I'm telling you today that your dream is possible.
I had the dream, the goal of meeting Les Brown, my mentor. And that dream came true because I believed that it could happen to me. I didn't think it would, but I never stopped believing that it could happen to me. So you've got to have a dream. You've got to have a goal. Because without those, life seems pretty pointless. How many of you in here have ever felt like your life has no purpose or any value? Raise your hands. I know that there's a few of you raising your hands, but all of you at some point in your lives have felt like that. I know it. I was there, sitting where you are sitting now. You've got to have goals. Have you got one? After I had met Les Brown and started chasing my dream of becoming a, a number one motivational speaker on the planet, after I had that dream in mind, I became very confident in myself. My self-esteem self was boosted. I walked around confidently all the time. I see a lot of you guys walking out the hallway with your shoulders slumped, not feeling very self-confident. That's because you don't know what your dream is. You don't feel like anyone cares about you. Someone cares about you. I care about you. I wouldn't be speaking to you today and sharing my experiences Ooh, with you Carl. if I didn't care about you. I need, where is Mr. Mathis class? With me. I need Glory Goldstein to come to the office. <coughs> Thank you. As I was saying, I walked around with the confidence like you wouldn't know. If I didn't have the self-esteem I have now, I wouldn't be able to stand before you guys today. But if you guys will just continue to, to learn and grow and work on your dreams, you too will have the confidence to stand before an audience and share your experiences. When you get to be a senior in high school, maybe you will be asked to come speak to the middle school and share your insights, your experiences. Your experience these last couple weeks of school, your experience in ninth and 10th grade doesn't have to be what mine was. I wasn't that great. I didn't have many friends. I had a low self-esteem. But you see, after I had accomplished this dream, something that I worked towards for months on end, day in and day out, I wasn't aware of my next trial. And there's a quote that says, it says, we're all confronted with trials, but the true measure of a man is how he chooses to react in the face of those trials. And I said earlier that when you're working on your dream, you're going to incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failures, a lot of setbacks, and a lot of defeats. This is going to happen, and you won't even know why it's happening to you. I didn't know why I was going through what I did in middle school. I didn't know why I had to leave my friends at Bullock Academy. I didn't know why I had to go to a new school. And so this was about roughly two years ago. I got involved in a relationship. And I cared a lot about this person. And this person supported me in what seemed like every aspect of my life. However, towards the end of this relationship, it became very toxic and very negative. They started telling me that I was too confident, I was too arrogant, and that I would never become the number one motivational speaker on the planet. And this, this crushed me. I was, very, I was very torn because what she was telling me and what the motivational speakers I was listening to every day were telling me were contradictory. It didn't make sense. I consciously knew that I deserved my dream, but I didn't subconsciously believe that I was meant to happen. That may not make sense to you, but you might think that you can achieve your dream, but maybe something happened in your, in, in your past. Someone told you that you couldn't have your dream. And now, in the back of your mind, your heart, I'll put it this way, your mind is telling you that you can't have your dream, but your heart does tell you that you can have your dream. That's what was going on with me. So this relationship came to an end and I was crushed. I thought that my dream of becoming a number one motivational speaker on the planet was over. And I was spending every day, I became, I became very down and depressed. The stomach issues that I had a couple years prior to this were starting to come back because I was becoming very down and depressed myself again. 
and I knew something had to change. You guys might feel in your life every morning when you wake up for school that you have no purpose, you feel very down and depressed, you don't feel like going to school, you don't see the point. This is somewhat how I felt. I can relate to you guys. I stopped working on myself. I stopped working on my dreams. I stopped reading the books that I wanted to. And I stopped hearing about school as much. However, one, one morning, I remember I was, I was in bed and my dad came in and he said, he said, you've you got to get up. He said, it's time to put all the lessons, all the principles that you've learned from the books that you've read, the speakers that you've listened to, and put that into action. And he was right. Something in my mind clicked. And every morning before school, I was waking up at 4.30. This is something that I still do today. And I'm saying that you have to wake up at 4.30 in order to achieve your dreams. I know you're looking at me with crazy looks. <laughs> you're probably looking forward to your sleep. However, when you have a dream and a goal in mind that inspires you, that makes you passionate about life, you won't want to stay in bed. Life, life becomes so interesting and exciting that you don't want to stay in bed. You wake up in the morning and all you're thinking about is your dream. That's pretty exciting, guys. That's how my life is at this point. I was saying earlier that I'm the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. And it's solely because I'm working toward my dream. I'm working on it day in and day out. I'm not giving up on it. You guys shouldn't give up on your dreams. So th this person was telling me that, that Brandon, you're, you're talking about becoming a millionaire? That's, that's ridiculous. That's not possible. You're talking about becoming the number one motivational speaker on the planet? You were born in a small town in Georgia, Brooklyn, Georgia. How are you going to become famous? How are you going to become an inspiration to the world? But you see, greatness is not this, this wonderful, special thing that only the elite among us have. This is something that truly exists in all of us. And once you realize that, the possibilities for your life are unlimited. So this person and other people were laughing at me. And maybe they were joking, however, if someone laughs at your dream and thinks it's ridiculous, that means you're on the right path. If no one's laughing at your dream, then your dreams aren't big enough. So as this person was telling me these negative things, as they were laughing at me, the quote from Frank Sinatra, some of you have heard it from, from Drake, but the original guy was Frank Sinatra. He says, the best revenge is massive success. And so I had this in mind. And just a few weeks after this relationship had come to an end, as I was working on my dream, I was asked to be on WTOC Mid Morning Live. I was asked to be on TV talking about Toastmasters, the club that I was a part of, and how it's helping me in my dream of becoming motivational speaker and I've had so many contacts after that point so many opportunities since I was able to go on TV and this person that I was in a relationship with is now off doing whatever they are doing I don't care what they're doing because I'm working on my dream I'm, I'm so focused on my on my, my my path in life my destiny that this, what this person was saying does not matter anymore. The, the laughs, the jokes, they don't matter. You're in middle school. This was one of the toughest times of my life. I had the dream of becoming an astrophysicist when I was in eighth grade, and so many people laughed at me, but I realized that that was just a hobby later on. So you guys might have something that you want to achieve in your life right now. Somebody yell out what they, what they want to do with their lives right now. Sorry, you're a medic. Art. Art. Engineer. Art. Engineer. Art. Army. All right. That's good. So don't let anybody tell you that it's not possible. I say to you today that whatever your dream is, I don't know what it is, it's possible. Whether it's helping your community, whether it's becoming uh, an engineer, like someone was saying, whether it's becoming a doctor, a nurse, a pediatrician, Becoming 
person in the army, the military. I don't know what it is. It's possible. Whether it's becoming a better daughter, a better son, it's possible. But it's also necessary that you work with people, that you give support, and that you never give up. The other thing is that it's you, that you've got to make it happen. It's your responsibility. If I didn't take responsibility for my life and my dream, I would still be just your average high school student over there, only going to school, only looking forward to the weekends, only looking forward to vacations, instead of where I am now. I wake up every morning looking forward to the day, what the day has to offer. Every day is exciting when you're working on your dream. Every single day, guys. And the last thing I'll share with you is that it's not over until you win. And I'll leave you with a quote. And I repeat this to myself every single day to keep me inspired, to keep my passion alive when chasing after my dream. And it says simply this, that if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famished nor gout, sickness nor pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want. If dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it, with the help of God, you will get it. So I'm saying to you today, and this is what my parents have told me ever since I was little, that I am blessed and highly favored. But you too are blessed and highly favored. You can have whatever it is that you want in life. But you've got to know your why. If you don't know what your why is and your why isn't strong, you're going to get knocked down every single day. You're going to feel depressed and down about your lives. You're going to feel like you have no purpose, no value. And that is your true sole purpose is to add value. Adding value means that you're using your gifts, your talents to inspire people, to show people that there is a brighter future for their lives. So if you didn't get anything out of what I'm telling you today, remember this one thing, that you are blessed and highly favored, and that your dream is possible. That was my dream, and now I'm on the path to achieving my next dream, becoming the number one motivational speaker on the planet. And you too can become the number one person in whatever your your field is. So I want to thank Ms. Lisa Crow for asking me to speak to you guys today.